I have a brief presentation, a short presentation in a devotional style. But in this presentation, I want you to hear this. Every one of us has a ministry that Jesus has called us to. And you may not know what your ministry is at the present time, but I want to encourage you to search through what God has called you to do. You may have to take him out if, it, if, if he's going to get loud, because that's going to be distracting, Sarah. And I can tell you that, and I won't tell anybody else, but Sarah's one of my girls. She's adopted, one of my adopted daughters here, so I can tell you, cork it, kid. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't mean to turn your face red, though, but now it is really. Uh... Yeah, but you know, I know, I know, I embarrass you, but... I love your servant heart, and this is exactly what I'm talking about. There's a ministry this morning that she provides for a child and, and doing child care, and I think it's wonderful. So that's really what we're talking about is this attitude. So Jesus was walking by. I'm just going to summarize it. Jesus was walking along the seashore, and there was a table out, and at this table out there was Matthew. He was teaching the crowds, and as he was coming by, he was teaching them, and what did we see? Well, am I going to summarize? Yes. He saw a man sitting at the table collecting taxes. And he called this tax collector. And he said, hey, you there right now, people are expecting what? Perhaps a lesson. Everyone observe this tax collector. He's turned against his own people collecting taxes. He's doing treasonous activity, taking money from you, supporting the Roman government. Don't be like this man. Let's move on. I think that's what the crowds were expecting. But instead, he said, you, I'd like you to follow me. And he turns and walks away. And immediately, we're told, Levi, Matthew, leaves everything and begins to follow Jesus. What's he doing calling a tax collector? A first century IRS agent. I am painfully aware this month of what IRS agents do and IRS laws and things. And so I'm wondering, you know, what, how is this going to, especially with a, a zealot who's against the Roman government, wants to overthrow the Roman government, now we get somebody supporting the Roman government from our own money. I'm going to pause every once in a while because Ning is translating for me in Chinese like I promised she would be doing this this day. So we move to the first slide, and I want you to see this clearly. And I wish I had my fake clicker, but I didn't bring it. So we need our first slide on, and we'll get started on this. Thank you. Is it on? It wasn't here. There it is. I want us all to be involved in discovering our personal ministry and, and know this. Our story is not that different from Levi's. He called you from where you are. He called you from where you are to follow him. In the process of following him, he's going to use you in a powerful way in the service, in the kingdom. Because you see, every Christian is a minister. Every Christian. Christians in this room, if I were to say, who are the ministers that we have working with us today? You may say, well, there's Kevin and there's, uh, there's Michael. Where'd you go, Michael? There, right here's my <laughs> hiding in there, uh, out taking care of donkeys. There's, there's Michael. And you say, here are our ministers, you know, we say youth work, and we have deacons, we have elders, and the ministers may stand, and you guys will sit and say, well, we have these ministers. But you see, if I were to say, could I have all the ministers of this church please stand, you should all immediately say, that's us, that's me. And you should all immediately stand, because God's made you a minister. Every Christian's a minister. You have the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God gives you a gift or gifts to be used in the service of the kingdom. And now you are a servant using your gift. If you're providing leadership, understand that leadership is a service. It's not an autocratic position of power. It's a service to support. And every one of us supported staff. That's me. I'm a hireling. I'm not a shepherd. You can call me pastor if you want, but I'm not. The wolf comes, you're, going, you're not going to see me. I'm running. I'm just a hireling. You're going to see the shepherds, and they're going to stand and fight against the wolf because they're here to protect and to provide, to help protect you and to provide you from false teaching. They're keeping their eye on me and all the teachers. 
the instruction and the growth of the church is under the direction of the shepherds as they serve us in that capacity. See, shepherds serve the sheep by bringing them to eat and to give them water and green grass and that kind of thing, rest. So the question is, what is your ministry? What gifts have God given you? Am I going too fascinating? Everything okay? It's not working? Okay. So uh, the four main purposes in the body of Christ, and this is what Jesus has called us to be. I used to say there were just two. And I think I've got a little better grasp of this now. It's taken about 58 years to get this thing right. By the way, I started attending church when I was three weeks old. It's taken about that long to get things right, about 58 years. Uh, Number one, we are to reach the the world with the good news of Jesus. That's what he was all about. That's what we're all about. You cannot have the heart of Jesus and not want to reach people with the gospel and be somewhat in some way involved in some way of reaching the world with the love of Jesus and the message of Christ. Number two, we're to grow each disciple. Every follower of Jesus, we want to become like Jesus himself. That is the next. If you'd like to have copies of this, I'd be happy to email them to you, by the way. But you can go ahead and take pictures of them. This is not copyrighted material. Grow each person. And number three, Jesus died for unity. Can everybody read that okay? Jesus died for unity among his followers. As much as he died to save us. I remember the prayer. How about you? John 17. Lord, make them one, just as we we are one. Paul said, The body of Christ isn't to be divided. Not at all. Christ didn't die for a divided group of followers. So you keep unity. And then remember the poor. Paul was challenged. He said, your gospel is right. What you're doing is right. Just make sure you remember the poor. And in Galatians, Paul says, and that's what we really are eager to do. So who are the poor? Well, let's be involved in benevolence. We are. And in Love, Inc., which is love in the name of Christ. We as a church house Love, Inc. in this wing of our church building. I'm going to talk about that in just a moment. I just wanted to introduce the idea. So we'll go on to the next slide. How are we going to reach the world with the good news? Well, collectively, these are the things we're presently involved in plus more. We have life groups going on. We've got a radio outreach going on. We've got Kids Fair coming up in a month. And I've got a few people who are coming out saying, I want to be a part of that Kids Fair. And by the way, I believe what's going to happen is if the radio station and the powers to be will allow us, we're going to share that table with Love, Inc. Because we are a mutual, mutually supportive ministry. And they're going to help paint faces and do all kinds of things. If we have a puppet group... A group of people who are willing to work together on a very short set of skits or just one or, one or two skits. They will allow us some time, I believe, to be on stage two or three times throughout the day. Not just at our booth, but actually be on stage to perform in front of. So I need some volunteers on that. If you want to connect with me afterwards, I'll, I'll be standing around here somewhere at these tables. Uh, we have a youth conference coming up. And you're involved in that. You're helping support it financially. You're helping support it by having kids in your home. You're helping support it by being here and sort of monitoring children's or teens' behaviors, children, young adults' behaviors. We're involved now with a group called Trail Life. You see the flags up here. These flags up here, one is for the country. You recognize that one, but the other one is brand new to you, right? The other one is the Boise Church of Christ flag. It's got it right there on, on the flag itself. And if you're watching this by internet, I just stepped out of the picture, but I want you to see this. Why is Boise Church of Christ on the bottom of Trail Life, USA? Because we own this. This is ours. We support it, and we, we control it, and, and this is the church that sponsors it. And you, as a group of men, are going to be called to come alongside of Chris and me and Michael and Ted and, and Terry and, and Chris and some others who just simply say, we're going to devote ourselves to help build the lives of young men and follow Scripture to do so. This is the answer to the Boy Scouts, the Cub Scouts, the scouting industry that is going, open the door for non-biblical practices. And we're saying, no, no, we're going to come back and we're going to hold to Orthodox Christian teaching and try to raise boys up to be like, be, be men in the kingdom of God. And so that's, what we're, that's why this is involved. Are we condemning anyone? No, we're just offering an option. And we're going to use this as an outreach in the community. Because if we can reach the kids, we can reach some parents. And so I believe as we become a, friendly, a 
kid-friendly group and we're focused on the kids, we're going to reach the family. Uh, we have men's and women's ministries. I'm not going to go into great detail on that, but we have men's groups that started on Saturday morning. And every Saturday morning at 8 o'clock, we're going to be meeting as a group of men, studying the Bible together and talking and getting in each other's lives. Same thing with women on Tuesday mornings, at least that's happening and more often as well. The prime timers, those who are over mm, however old and beyond, uh, I call them the over the hill gang. Uh, and they meet every Wednesday, Tuesday evening for games and Wednesday for Bible study still, right? That's what I said, Thursday. What time on Thursday? One o'clock on Thursday. One thirty, actually. Okay, they'll correct me and that'll be okay. I just want you to be aware, these are the things we're involved in, in the trail life ministry I just mentioned, and missionaries as well. We have, we're involved in helping out in prayer, though not financially at this point, the voice of the martyrs. But some individuals are helping out the voice of the martyrs, and you're involved in prayer with uh, Steve and Carrie Durham. I want to add to this the list that I don't have is the Boise Christ, uh, Classical Academy that is housed here as well. And Benjamin has uh, started that ministry of teaching kids with a, uh, a private school set up here. And we are, because, because he is part of this congregation, and we are involved in that. And uh, at least one has helped teach in the science area of that. So these are areas I want us to know. You say, where can I plug in? Look at these and say, God has gifted me in these ways. Next if you would. Every Christian is a minister, so grow to help each person to become a disciple of Christ and to become more mature. So we use Sunday morning classes. Guys, we need more teachers. God's calling you to be a teacher and to help these children in particular to to implement knowledge and character development. Same thing for Wednesday evening classes. Our life groups, we are in the process of reworking and regrouping and growing our life groups, and there's going to be a clear kickoff in September of just a whole revitalized and powerful life group. That doesn't mean we're dismissing everything now. We want to pump in life now, but we're going to take a little bit of a break during the summer and just explode this thing so that everyone can be involved in a life group who wants to be and needs to be, and I believe everyone could benefit from being a part of the life group. And men's and women's ministries are also helping each person to grow up in a minute. You see how there's an overlap the very things we're using for outreach are also true for helping us grow. And the things that are helping us grow are being used for outreach. Why? Because when people come into our men's or women's ministries and they hear us talking about the benefits of walking with the Lord, that's going to trigger. And we talk about personal sin and how we're overcoming because of the power of Christ and forgiveness is available. That's going to trigger in their hearts a response. Uh, prime timers and youth ministry and young adult ministry and trail life ministry, again, and Boise Classical Academy, all of those are areas as a congregation we can be involved in, along with what you're doing in your neighborhoods and any other group you're part of, like Kiwanis or Rotary or your school or your neighborhood outreach. Next slide, and then we're going to move on on this. Is, anybody, uh, is everybody with me on these things? So we're going to go from growing to be like Christ to our next kind of ministry, and that is, I should look at my notes. By the way, as we look at this and the, and the serving of each, um, that is the next, isn't it? No. And we're going to be involved in the unity and the outreach uh, of the body, of providing opportunities for great fellowship. And in those the unity and the love among the followers of Jesus, the same groups. But I'd like us to see some things like Joseph Shulam had mentioned, that is inviting people to your homes and saying, come on over and let's eat. We're out to eat together. Or just some hospitality. A care ministry would not be the care group re revitalized, but rather you're looking out for the needs of the people. We've got a ministry team that's looking for needs and fulfilling those needs in the benevolence area. And that would be you know, where you would sign up to do something like that, but that helps provide for unity. We have youth ministry and, and uh, Ivydale ministry and the Biblical Study Center and Love, Inc., and we are involved in an outreach on this university campus. It's not our program. We're not overseeing it, but it's our program, and that we started it, and we own the facilities, and we support the work to reach the students at the university. And we're utilizing the center 
to bring about unity among all the believers on the university campus. That, my friends, is powerful. And that's attractive to the students who see ministries working together in the name and the cause of Christ. And as we move to the last, we need to be sure that we remember the poor and the help. And that involves our benevolence ministry, our Love, Inc. ministry. And Love, Inc. is Love in the Name of Christ. It's an organization that coordinates efforts among all of the churches to help take care of the benevolent needs of our, of our uh, community. They do all of the vetting so that somebody who doesn't soak the system goes from one church to another church to another church to another church to another church, and we don't communicate with each other, and, and they're, it's kind of defrauding the people of God in that way. Uh, they vet them, and then they specifically send them to a, a specific church to help and get them involved in that church community process. And so we are concerned about helping people with their physical and spiritual needs as they connect with the body of Christ. And we have a foster care program, a, a lot of them, but particularly Kevin Harper, who uh, is the brother in the Lord, has started this mini- or is part of this ministry of foster care and safe place ministry for women, women's shelter, and in your personal giving, both here and in when you see a need, uh, God is stirring us up to take care of the poor. By the way, why would we do that? Pure and undefiled religion is caring for the widows and the orphans. God has a special heart for the poor, and he utilizes his church to help those within the community, doing good to all those who are of the household of faith, and to the rest of the world. We, we want to help. But you see, Love, Inc. has set the model in this way. We give a hand up, not a hand out. And that's an important factor. You say, what can I do to help Love, Inc.? Volunteer some hours. They need some people who will, who will take care of the phones, uh, in, intake, the vetting process, the funneling process to the various ministries. They've got about six or seven stations that they take somebody through and financial training. These are things that, man, you know, you don't have a lot of time, a couple hours. Listen, none of these are lifelong commitments. Your commitment is to the Lord. That's lifelong. Look, if you're married, your commitment is to your spouse. That's lifelong. You said till death do I, not debt. You said till death to us part. You said in sickness and health, even if somebody is, is dealing with mental or emotional needs. I mean, you said sickness or health. You made a commitment before the Lord. That's a lifelong commitment. But you see, these ministries, that you're, you're going to be a teacher for children. You'll be a teacher for children for two or three months, two or three weeks. It's not a lifelong commitment. It's not like one person said, you sign up to be a teacher, and the only two ways you can get out is to die or have a complete hysterectomy. No, you don't have to wait for that. You can get out of that by just simply saying, hey, this, I don't have any time to do that anymore. I'm called to this other ministry. It's not, they, none of these are lifelong commitments. You just need to be aware of that. So finally, I want to pull all this together in this last statement, and that is this. God has called you, first of all, to follow Jesus. Surrender with all of your heart. Don't hold anything back. That is your lifelong commitment. And as a follower of Jesus, you're a servant to everyone else in the kingdom. The elders, are they in a position of authority? In a sense, but they're called to be servants, not authorities. And in that respect, they are submissive to the body in providing the needs for the body. Are the deacons authorities? Well, yeah, over the realm in which they serve, but... They're not authorities in the sense of dictating to them. They're servants. In fact, the word deacon means servant. It's better to translate deacon as minister. I don't know why we transliterate it, diakonos, to deacon. It's just special servant. And so it is that every Christian is called to be a deacon in that sense, right? What I'm saying is the, body of the, the Bible teaches we each submit to each other, which would mean this. I yield to your needs, even to the point of giving up what I need if it's going to benefit you. And ultimately, and this God is my witness as much as I can pull in my heart, and I'm going to call you to follow this one. Whatever it takes, 
I will submit to doing whatever is needed for the kingdom of God to lift up the cross of Jesus and the resurrection of Christ. For that is our only hope. And that involves the forgiveness of sins for the world, that we proclaim that, and involves the unity of believers. Those are the two things Jesus is primely, primely wanting. So let's involve ourselves in in those things that are at the heart of Christ. If you agree with that, I'm just going to ask you to stand and pray with me. If you don't agree with it, stay where you are. Lord, we surrender ourselves to you and our will, to your will. We, uh, we're not very good at trying to fit our, uh, you into our lives in momentary spots, small spots. We, we need to fit ourselves into your will, and I pray that you will help us do that and surrender completely. And then you gift us, Lord, however you want, and use us in whatever way, and just squeeze every bit out of us into the service of the kingdom as we follow the one who did the same from the cross and does the same now as he serves us. Thank you, Jesus, for your love, for your patience, for your forgiveness. Help us never take those things for granted. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's sing.